Hey, it's a new chapel chat, and look at this, we got two new guys here. Father John, here on my right, Father Brian on my left, and uh, welcome to Our Lady Good Council. It's great to have you guys here. It is awesome. It's great to be here. It's great They've to actually be been here. here for a month, but uh, where were you when I first came? Didn't you disappear as soon as I came? No, or did you I went to Montreal. I guess uh, you I and I took Canada off to Canada. You, yeah. So we were with the teens uh, on pilgrimage with the North American Martyrs, and I think this is maybe the second weekend that we're going to have all together since uh, you guys have been here. So it's great to have you here. Yeah, you. And a real joy to introduce them, two great men. Um, and actually a great opportunity, it seems to me, today as we film this is the feast of uh, St. Jean-Marie Vianney, for whom Father John is named. Of course, he pronounces it a little different. And um, what, a, what a great chance to talk just about priesthood. We don't do that all yes. the time. So if I ask you guys, here's a chance both not only to introduce yourselves, but say a little bit about the vocation that the Lord's called us to and that He's undoubtedly calling on some of you to, maybe you haven't heard it yet. Um, why'd you become a priest? Give a quick story. Oh, wow, quick. I have a lot of family members that just left the faith and I was always sort of wondering why they weren't Catholic and then I suddenly realized that there was a lot more to it. And when my uncle got into drugs and my other uncle had difficulty with homosexuality, I said, well, who's really going to help these people? And I just got really desirous to go out and reach out to people that I could help because they didn't want me to help them. So I said, I've got to learn as much as I can, as quickly as possible to help people get to heaven. And I said to the Lord, you know, I'll give you 80 years if you're giving me eternity. It's a pretty good trade. Yeah. <laughs> 80 <laughs> eternity. So really, my uncles inspired me. My uncle's no kidding. Uh, wanting to get them into the faith. And I know many people want their children to get into the faith. So, And from there on, I just wanted to be a missionary. And you've been ordained how long now? It'll be 11 years in Thanksgiving. Okay, 11 years. And you've been most of your priesthood until just recently over in Europe, correct? Yeah. Whereabouts? Um, mainly in Budapest. Okay, in Budapest. Hungary. Yeah. Okay, great. You're a little newer. I am. I am a lot newer. Until recently, the second youngest priest in the Archdiocese of Detroit. A couple months ago, yeah. So, Father Brian, you were ordained when? I was ordained on June 7th, 2014. Okay, so just a little bit more than a year ago? Just over a year, yeah. So why are you a priest? To be honest, I'm a priest because I heard the Lord's call. It sounds simple, it sounds almost um, mundane at times, but after high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I really didn't have a direction with my life. and. I went to discernment weekend at Sacred Heart, and I really heard the Lord calling me, really heard the Lord speaking to me in the Most Blessed Sacrament, hmm. and as I was praying the rosary. Um, and it took me a while to really kind of figure all that out, but I just heard I need to give my life to Christ, and I really heard that happen with the priesthood. Hmm. It's just, it sounds simple, but He's given so much to me, given so much grace to me. It's all I can do to preach His gospel to all those who can't, who will hear me and who don't want to hear me. Mm. In season and out of season, welcome, unwelcome. It's everything, yeah. and he's given us so much. The least I can do is give him my life in service to his people. So 11 years, one year, 19 years. I know for myself, I would say to people, um, I say this oftentimes, people think I'm joking, but I'm not, I, I wouldn't trade my life with anybody in the world. No. I mean, I, I consider myself I the happiest, <laughs> the happiest man in the world, and there's not a close second. That's how I tend to describe it. And it's not because, you know, the life of priesthood is like, you know, uh, some sort of glorified bachelorhood. Uh, our, our life is um, remarkably demanding, and much like the life of those of you who are uh, fathers or mothers. Uh, it's just a different, con completely different kind of life that the Lord's called us to be. He, he's called us to renounce marriage for the sake of marriages. You know, it's one way to, I think I often look at it, you know, like we gave up marriage and family so as to put ourselves at the service of everybody's marriage and family in the area that we serve. So what would you say? we got four guys in our parish who are um, either in the seminary or considering going into the seminary right now. What would you say to somebody who's listening right now? And if you're a single male, well, then you're eligible to priesthood. And what, what would you say to him to encourage him to consider giving his life to the Lord? I would echo the words of Saint Pope St. Pope Saint John Paul II and say, be not afraid. Our world can really put this great fear upon giving our lives up, giving our lives to Christ. And I would say, don't listen to that. Listen to Christ. 
He never gives us more than we can handle. I've learned that very much in my life. And if he is calling you to be a priest, he will give you the grace to do his will. That's just how it is. And be not afraid. It's this notion that St. John Paul II really echoed again and again, and I really think it is, he did that for a reason, because it's so important here. You know, be not afraid. What would you say? Oh, I could say a lot of things. I would be extremely simple with this one. We very often just sort of run around saying, what am I going to do with my life? And we start setting our plans even before we stop and say, a simple question, God, why did you make me? Until you ask that question and until you can honestly hear his answer, don't start making a bunch of plans because he's, he's already decided the most happiest path, the happiest path for you. So all you have to do is say, Lord, what do you want? And listen to his, to his answer. And in order to listen to his answer, sometimes you have people around you who are giving you good advice. So look for people to help you understand the way God speaks. Yeah, you know, we're all called to vocations. And there's, there's really, the way I think of it anyway, there's one vocation. Vocation just comes from the word, the call, or to call. The one call is to follow me. So Jesus calls us all to follow him. Whether you're a man, a woman, doesn't matter. The invitation is to live as a radical disciple, mindful that he and he alone can give us abundant life. That call is going to come in different ways, different states of life. For us, it's priesthood. For most people, it's going to be marriage. But for those of you who are still out there who are unsure, um, the three of us implore you, asking the intercession of Our Lady Good Counsel and St. Jean-Marie Vianney, um, to ask exactly what uh, Father John just said with the spirit of what Father Brian just said, with great confidence and trust in the Lord, to say, Jesus, what do you want of me? Why am I alive? What's my mission? What's my purpose? What's the destiny that you've made me for here in this life? And then trust that whatever it is he's asking, until you get into that spot, you're never going to be happy. No. I ran like crazy from my vocation. And when, when I finally responded to the Lord's call, it was like he just tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and I looked and he said this and I went, you got to be kidding. And then I walked into it and I said, why did I wait so long? So whatever it is that the Lord's got for you, know that it is abundant life. Whatever the vocation is, there's going to be crosses. Whatever the vocation is, there's going to be challenges. The grass on this side is not any greener than the grass on that side. The key is, are we doing what it is that the Lord wants? Count on the prayers of the three of us for the Lord to give you big ears to hear his voice, big hearts to respond generously. And please pray for us that we will uh, fulfill the vocation that the Lord's called us to with great joy. Peace.